start with some big breaking news and the sporting Lisbon manager Ruben Amorin has reached a verbal agreement in principle with Liverpool that's according to Sky Germany the 39 year old is said to have discussed a three-year contract to become Jurgen Klopp's successor Sky Germany are reporting that a deal is still to be finalized between the two clubs but sources in Liverpool have refuted this story Amorin who was also on Bayern Munich's managerial shortlist has an exit clause for this summer in his contract with Sporting. Sky Sports News reported last week that Amarin was a leading candidate as Liverpool searched for their next head coach. Uh, for a bit of added context, just four days ago, Amarin said he can't make any guarantees that he will still be at Sporting next season. That was during his pre-match news conference on Friday. Big news there for Liverpool fans. I know that sources close to Liverpool in and around Merseyside are refuting this and they're pushing back on it. But it was Sky Germany that reported that Alonso had rejected Liverpool and that Alonso was rejecting Bayern Munich to stay at Spy Leverkusen ever before a quote-unquote tier one journalist on social media. That doesn't mean that this is true, but... Some sources and journalists I've spoken to privately in the last few weeks have all said uh, Ruben Almerin was very high on the list for Man United, but they've sort of looked away from him because he looks like he's Liverpool bound. So the story really ties in. And I think that Ruben, Ruben Almerin is an exciting manager. A lot of Liverpool fans are they have a different feeling towards him as they did Alonso. Like you've got young Tom, Tom Little on the show that always wanted Almerin. So some people... He's my guy. He's always been my guy. The Alonso deal felt a little bit you know, more romantic, an ex-Liverpool player, an ex-Champions League winner coming home. But with that, maybe a little bit more pressure to deliver, where Ruben Almarin seems to be a fit that a lot of Liverpool fans are behind. But I would love to get your views. I would love to get your opinions on this. Why, why do you think Liverpool are refuting this news? Do you think it's because it's nonsense and they're looking at somebody else? Do you think Liverpool are just trying to control the narrative and the story as they typically do with their transfers? With Liverpool, most of the news that ever leaks out comes from abroad as opposed to from within England. They're a very tight-knit, together community in, 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 in it most of the time. And even when a, if a journalist steps outside of those parameters and boundaries, he's often lambasted by the club and then you very rarely see those exclusives anymore so is it that side of things is or do you think it's absolute nonsense i would love to get your thoughts and your feelings on this in the comment section below but liverpool fans according to sky germany ruben Almarin is has agreed a deal in principle to become your new manager give us your thoughts and feelings <laughs> Now, reading Court Offside this morning, I was on their website because I was reading the exclusive column from Fabrizio Romano, which we'll come to very, very soon. By the way, people hit like buttons and subscribe if you haven't done so already. There's a, an article in there that comes from Spain, so it's sourcing Spanish outlets that, also oh, one Spanish outlet, one German outlet, that Arsenal have a deal in place for... Joshua Kimmich. Sorry, my, 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 my train of thought just went then. It says here that uh, Arsenal have reportedly reached an agreement with Bayern Munich midfielder Joshua Kimmich for him to move to the Emirates Stadium on a three-year deal in this summer transfer window. The article goes on to say the Gunners could do with some strengthening midfield as Jorginho is not getting any younger, whilst Thomas Parthey has missed chunks of the season through injury, and it doesn't seem the most reliable for them long term. Uh, the, an intelligent defensive midfield player like Kimmich uh, could therefore be ideal for Arsenal this summer with Mikel Arteta sure to, sure to be keen to have more, a more regular partner for Declan Rice in the middle of the park. And look, I don't necessarily think that Arsenal have got any agreement in place yet. I know the news article is saying it. I know the news article is claiming that there's an agreement in principle Maybe here there's a bit of Chinese whispers, an element of Kimmich's representation saying, look, if you can agree a deal with Bayern and this is what you're willing to pay us and this is what you're willing to give us as a signing on fee and this is the position that we're going to play, then yeah, I think we'd be happy at the idea of joining. There may have been a conversation along those levels as opposed to he is outright said to Arsenal, you're my next destination, 
I'm shaking your hand today. I'm going to talk to nobody else. Get the deal done with Bayern Munich. And I'm an Arsenal player. I don't think it's as clear cut as that in the way in which it was with Declan Rice last year. But if we look away from the deal for a moment, because this is clearly a player that Arsenal were interested in, multiple reports surrounding him to Arsenal in recent weeks. You put him in the midfield with Declan Rice. That is big trouble. That is big trouble for rivals. That is big trouble for anybody that's trying to compete with Arsenal. That is an absolute powerhouse mixed with such wonderful technical ability. Odegaard ahead of them. Saliba and Gabriel behind them. If Arsenal do this, it's, it's crazy if Arsenal do this. And when I say it's crazy, I mean it from the perspective of Arsenal in my lifetime developed some brilliant teams. But they seldom added top class quality to them. And they've done it with Declan Rice. Could they do it again with, with Kimmich? That is just not how Arsenal operated. So seeing them, and people often say to me, Terry, why, why do you say things like Arsenal worry you or scare you? It's because I see Arsenal in more than one way oper operating like a giant club. And for so much of my life, they would allow their best players to leave and they'd replace them with potential, not quality. This is worrying indeed. But staying with um, the, uh, the court offside and exclusive interview here from Fabrizio Romano, there's been a lot of questions about the striker element at Arsenal, and they're definitely in for another one. But what Fabrizio pulls on here is about the future of Gabriel Jesus, where he has said, said that, you know, he spoke to Arsenal, spoke to his sources, and Gabriel Jesus's future at Arsenal, in his opinion, is not under any threat. It's not as though he's going to... His, his view is he's not going to be sold. His opinion is that he's not going to be moved on quickly. I want to get your views and opinions on this. Rivals, neutrals, Arsenal fans, with Kai Havertz delivering in the middle, with a brand new number nine being a, a, an important component this summer for Arsenal, what is the future of Gabriel Jesus in your opinion? Is it going to be similar to what he faced at City, where he'll be used centrally sometimes, on the left sometimes, on the right sometimes? Is he going to become that bit part fringe squad player who is multifaceted at Arsenal? Is it almost history repeating itself? Could he still be the leading number nine in your opinion? Could it be a young striker Arsenal sign? He gets past his injury issues and he, he starts up front. I mean, the fact that Kai Havertz is starting ahead of him in that position, I think is, is, is pretty telling. But I'd love to get your views and opinions on the future of Gabriel Jesus. Now, moving to Manchester City, this story broke yesterday from man like Santi, an absolute legend in this space. He says that Man City have agreed personal terms with Lucas Paqueta on a long-term contract. No negotiations between the clubs have taken place yet. This is, of course, expected in the summer. But this is almost like the worst kept secret in football. There's been a lot of fans I've seen of Liverpool, Man United, even Arsenal at times. I'd love to get Paqueta, Paqueta, Paqueta. He's such a good player. He's too good for West Ham. I think they mean that in the sense of he could be playing for a team challenging for Premier League titles and Champions Leagues. And I agree, he's excellent. But the fact that City was so close to signing him in the summer, and it was only this allegation around betting, a betting scandal that stopped it, he was always going to end up at Manchester City. The irony is now City probably should have gone through the deal because there's been no further action. He's played all season for West Ham and they went and signed Nunes instead. And he's just been absolutely dog breath for Man City. But I had a big argument with City fans on a match reaction maybe five, six weeks ago now. And I said one of the elements of, and it was a weird argument because I was defending City and they were kind of shitting on their own club. And we were talking about how <clears throat> Excuse me. We were talking about how what's so brilliant about this about City setup. Let's ignore the charges and ignore all of that for a moment because that's not been proven. But when they buy poorly, they rectify the issue so quickly. They give it six months, a year, 18 months at best, and they start moving people on, bringing in new blood. And they know Calvin Phillips isn't the guy. They know Nunez isn't the guy. I don't think they're overly convinced by Kovacic. Decent at holding the ball, but what else does he bring? That's why they're now looking at Paqueta. It's going to be a big money deal. It'll be another 75 million, 80 million pound deal for him because City will respond. Not only 
they, they, might, they could still win a bloody treble this season. Let's, let's have it right. They could still have a treble. But they haven't been their same selves. There has been an ever so slight drop off because the presence of the Gundawans, the presence of the, the Mareses haven't been replaced. And what I find so intriguing about City is that they're not just going to go, right, we'll give this same group of midfielders a whole nother year together to try and make it. No, we need to make changes now because we can't afford another year. Because if Arsenal and Liverpool get 5% better next year and we even just stay where we are, we may not win the league again. And that is all they're fighting to do is to win that league title. And I think it's quite inspiring to see those standards. But look, Paqueta to City, I think we all knew it was going to happen. I don't suppose any of you are shocked by it. But give me your thoughts and your feelings in the comments section below. Hit the like button before you leave. Subscribe and we'll see you all again very, very soon.